I'm Sheldon Sneed, and I'm here with Junior Art Action Project with my friend Danny and our guest, Gina, but Miss Gina Montana. Well, when I started teaching the young artists, um, I thought it was very important for each student to create their own patterns and their own design um, instead of just jumping straight into the sewing technique. So the first thing I did was to create patterns and help them create their own design so that they could get a real experience of what it's like to create an original piece of beadwork as a Mardi Gras Indian. My position is queen of the yellow Pocahontas Mardi Gras Indians. I have um, been the queen for the past 10 years and it's a, it's a big role in my life. You know, it's not just about being the queen on Mardi Gras Day but I have to represent my gang and I have to represent the tradition every day. Miss Gina, um, are there like days when you like just like feel like it's too much? Like that you feel like you don't want to do it? Like is it like a, you wish you could take a day off or something? Never. I never feel like that. There are days in years past, in the mid-90s, I used to work two jobs. I worked for New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. I was the producer of the Congo Square area of the Jazz Fest. And simultaneously, I was producing the Essence Music Festival's art show. Simultaneous to that, I was sewing on my Mardi Gras Indian bead work. And I'm a single parent head of the household. And I would never get tired. I mean, I, I would get tired, but I would never allow that to, for, to stop me from doing my artwork. There were days when I, was, I would work from 9, 10 o'clock in the morning and be up sewing to 1 or 2 a.m. Um, as it got closer to Mardi Gras Day, there were literally days, especially the week before Carnival, where I might work sewing beadwork literally 24 hours around the clock without sleeping in order to make it, in order to be out there and represent my culture and represent my tradition on Mardi Gras Day and also to represent my gang, Yellow Pocahontas, Mardi Gras Indians, and my big chief. 
So it, it's a challenge. You know, I've had my moments, but I would never quit and I never, I never gave up and I never stopped. Now, I thank you all for being here because the more you see and work with the children, giving them a broader perspective like where you're from, where you're from, giving them a broader perspective of other people and knowing that other people care, not only care about how they feel, but want to come down and just to help them feel a little better. Help me feel a little better because as an adult, trying to make children feel safe when you're not sure how safe you are yourself is type is difficult. Trying to teach children uh, a skill so that they can just relieve their mind by doing something else what well, you can barely do because you're traumatized, you know, is another thing. And I think by working for me, working with the children means more to me than it does for them because it gives me a chance to channel my energies and to try to keep them safe and teach them something to relieve their anxiety. Like just coming in here that I'm like I have no family here and I have like nothing here like you know to feel connection with I get emotional so I imagine those who actually live in those homes. It feels like you're in a third world country or somewhere else because this does not look like America to me. It's like me and Luz we compared it to VR but like I don't know if we had I think we had a flood there or something it happened like a while ago but way back mm -hmm. and we compared it and it's kind of interesting because it's like it feels like I'm not like she said, in America. Yeah, and I think it's kind of sad how some New Orleans residents kind of have given up on the area and they don't, they want to move and they don't want to come back. It makes you wonder, like, where did all the money go? Like, I sure would like to know. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, they're supposed to rebuilding. I don't see it. And it's been like a year later and it still looks the same. Exactly. Yeah. Do you feel like you're making a difference in people's lives? Um, I I don't know. You know, I'm not I'm not sure if that's necessarily why I'm here. I'm just here to sort of provide services and support where they're needed and where they can be. Um, a lot of it is people making differences in their own lives, and me just trying to assist in that, making difference in my own life as well, learning about it. I mean, a big part of why I'm so glad I'm here is because being up in Chicago very disconnected from what's going on here you know like the media only shows you a little bit and kind of what they want you to see and not really very much at all especially as it gets farther or farther away from Katrina so what's it like to tell people in need oh wow <laughs> um well that's a really interesting question and it gets to a lot of the fundamental issues of what volunteers are doing down here um it's there are some really interesting dynamics. Um, a lot of the volunteers with Common Grounds, which is who I'm working with, um, are you know college kids who have come down. A lot of them from northern cities. Not not all of them by any means, but a lot of them are. So it brings an interesting dynamic. Um, really, what we try to do is just uh, the motto, which I really appreciate, is solidarity, not charity. And um, so just try to provide. Um, to kind of just listen and see what people are needing and try to provide support and it's it's pretty incredible to be down here and be part of an organization that's kind of focused that way.